Hey everyone, it's Tuesday, August 7th, 2012. This is Talk To Me Tuesday, number 54, and I am going to talk as quick as I can to make this video as quick as I can. Not a whole lot to show this week because some of what I've been doing I can't show because it's a part of Elf and Jen's prize for winning the TTMT one year anniversary giveaway. So, But I will take pictures and once it's shipped out and received, then you'll be able to see what I've been doing. Okay, other than that, um, adventures in paper piecing. I mentioned in my video last week that my daughter would have had two entries into the contest if there was a paper piece pattern for a snowman. And Ofen Jen, being the wonderful person she is, sent me a very wonderful comment on my video and at the same time sent me a link for a pattern for a paper piece snowman. And I sat down last night and figured I'd at least get started on it and would probably finish it this morning. That didn't end up being the case. I'm either getting better at paper piecing or this is a very easy pattern or kind of probably a combination of both. But here he is. <laughs> I love snowmen and I love him. He's so cute. <laughs> um, the eyes, the nose, the buttons, and the arms are actually embellishments that are done after the block is put together. So those were done at work. And the eyes and the arms and the buttons are supposed to be embroidered and the nose is supposed to be appliqued. But I chose tiny little black buttons for the eyes and the buttons. I did a satin stitch embroidery for the nose and I did little stitching for the arms. So, yay! <laughs> there he is. Um, I chose a fabric that is white with like white little snowflake looking pattern on it. Um, I don't think you can see that. Get close enough, maybe you can. There, try that. And then of course the background is blue with white swirls. It kind of looks like swirling snow. So, yay! <laughs> I'm really happy. Um, you know, I really like working with Elf and Jen's patterns more than anyone else because they're always very clear, the pattern pieces are always separated, and so on and so forth. But I have to say, this one wasn't bad. This one was actually pretty simple, you know. And the only quarter inch seam allowance you really have to come up with, you know, outside of the usual within the pieces is just on the edges. That's easy enough to do, especially when you have a ruler that you can mark it with. <laughs> so, absolutely love it. Um, I picked up a book called Love of Crochet. It's a new magazine that's come out. There's actually, this is the third issue. One was a preview issue, one was an actual issue, and this is the actual second issue. And this is the magazine, and in it is um, several really nice patterns. But one of the ones that I really liked was, and my daughter's sneaking by, say hi, Sash. <laughs> was called Turkish Love Knots. And of course I showed a while ago in a video a Turkish beaded bracelet that when I found the video I didn't know what language it was in. It is in Russian, folks. Okay? <laughs> and I'll try and put a link down below. You can go watch the same video I watched. But um, just watching the video I was able to figure it out. And then when I saw this, I thought it was cool. So, And there's other stuff that's in here. And I'm going to just show a picture real quick of one of the things I really want to do. And that's this right here. Um, it is a Turkish bead crochet snake. And there is a history behind these. They were actually done by prisoners of war. And on the stomach of the snake, they used to put their prison ID, prison ID number. So... And I want to get the book that tells you the techniques and all that. But anyway, back to the bracelets. <laughs> um, there's a better picture of the bracelets right there. So I decided I had to try and make one. So the first one I made is done using embroidery floss and glass seed beads. So that's this right here. And this has an adjustable closure. And it's just, you know, the magazine tells you the site to go to to find how to do the little macrame piece that's worked over the end threads. 
and it actually works really well. Um, I already lost one of my beads at work, but that's okay. Um, very simple. I love it. Um, and then I wanted to do another one, but I didn't want this one to be adjustable, so I did the loop and bead closure method, which is just creating a loop on one end and putting a large bead on the other end so that it just slips in here, the loop slips over the bead, and voila, that's how you close it. And this is done with embroidery flaw, or no, this is done with crochet thread and little smiley face beads that I had. So I thought that was like really cool. And then I did a, do a third one, but my daughter actually has it. I made it and gave it to her. So you'll have to watch her video, and I'll put her link down below. For whoever is not subscribed, please go check out her videos and subscribe. Sometimes she gets going, sometimes she gets slow. So go kick her in the butt, get her moving. <laughs> but she can show you that one. Um, went to one of the websites that was mentioned in the magazine. And, of course, there's the video that I had watched for the other bead bracelet I did. That's how I found out it was in Russian. <laughs> and after the video finished, there were four little videos that popped up, and there was another one. And I said, oh, that looks cool. Let me check that out. And it's in Japanese. <laughs> I don't know what it is, me and, you know, patterns in foreign languages. But I believe it's um, called the Beaded Edge. You go to the website, and it's all in Japanese. So, <laughs> good luck there. I even tried to get it translated, but it only translates certain things, not all of it. Like, I don't know how much 120 yen is, <laughs> but um, this is the pattern that they showed how to do. It's actually for, like, around a collar or, you know, like towel edging, whatever. You know, it's just for edging pieces. It's supposed to be done with a smaller hook. I just used what I had because, of course, the flowers would be smaller. And that's the back side I'm showing you. Smart. <laughs> But that's it. Um, I am going to try another piece, but I'm going to use a smaller hook and, you know, tighten up the threads because, the, you know, smaller hook makes tighter stitches. And, of course, I had to mess around and, you know, just threw a bunch of beads onto the thread that I had. And I came up with these. And they're just like little beaded earrings or, you know, if you want to... Hang them on your Christmas tree or whatever. I don't really wear dangly earrings, but so these would probably go on my tree. But just a little something I came up with I thought was cute. So that's the crafty I can show you this week. And um, as things get done, I'll take pictures of them. And once the package is mailed out um, and received, then I will do a little video clip to show you what was received. Other than that, uh, I mentioned a, meand a mini meandering book um, that's done with cardstock paper. Of course, I tried it with the poster board. Remember this? Uh, a little too thick. I tried it with the... I always forget. I tried it with the scrapbooking paper. Still not the right texture. So... I was going to go to Joann's and pick up some cardstock because it was on sale. And, you know, on sale, it's almost $12 for a pack of 30 12 by 12 inch sheets. We happen to be in Walmarts, and boy, am I glad I didn't go to Joann's. I would have been kicking myself. 30 12 by 12 inch sheets of cardstock, five bucks. Five bucks. Five bucks. This is the one I bought. It's just the plain brights. Yeah, five bucks. Unbelievable. So, hopefully next week you'll see one of the mini meandering books done. It's not going to be perfect, folks, because I'm not really a paper crafter. Um, so, I will do my best. And at the same time, I picked up these mini alphabet stamps for 97 cents. I'm sure there are a lot more at the craft store. And this really pretty, it's like a turquoise blue ink pad for 97 cents. So, we'll see what happens. Anyway, um, I look forward to watching everyone's videos. 
I am going to wish everybody a wonderfully crafty week, a wonderfully crafty weekend. I have to get my curtains done for my kitchen, and we'll get a picture of those. I actually have something hanging up right now that I made a long time ago. Um, I'm not going to show that right now, though. And other than that, uh, for me it's definitely good night. For you it's good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day, whatever it is. I really do hope it's a great one. I really do hope this video is short enough so I can get it done. Other than that, I will see you all next week. And keep an eye out for my vlog about my trip through the hackathon. So, bye!